The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. As Obi Wan Kenobi once said, "Hello there, and welcome to Data Bank Brawl, the podcast where we learn about Star Wars characters, discuss them, share our little feelings about those characters, and then make them fight for our amusement and yours." I am your host. My name is Joseph Scrimshaw. With me, as always, is Ken Nabsock. Well, sir, happy to be here. You know it. I know it. The American people know it. We need to do this with a little splash of whiskey. Today. That's right. Returning guest. Uh, whiskey has not been present uh, for Data Bank Brawl. It's taken a couple episodes off. Whiskey's a really hard guest to book. A very busy <laughs> schedule. A lot of people need to drink it. Uh, and here, whiskey is back. So that is great. Uh, longtime listeners know exactly how this works, right? We get a couple mm-hmm. characters. Uh, we tell a little story about uh, some disagreements that have to be worked out physically. <laughs> Because that's how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> uh, that's how it works in Star Wars. Yeah. I, I love, too, because we, we rebroadcast encore presentations of Data Brink Brawl on the YouTube channel. That is a great way to say it. Which is how I think some people might discover us. And I have to imagine, because it's unlike any other Star Wars podcast out there, just some guys and occasionally Jennifer sitting there with a splash of whiskey doing weird Star Wars voices and telling weird stories. <laughs> I love that this show is the gateway into the rest of the Force Center for yeah. some people. Yeah, we just discovered on YouTube. Yeah, you see a video on YouTube that says this character versus this character. You think it might be a very serious scholarly debate right, about right. who deserves to win in a fight. And instead, it's mostly people's, you know, sometimes singing or having problems with their teeth. You we know? take this very serious. Exactly, exactly. We've been doing a couple solo themed episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, But I wanted to wander uh, this week because Star Wars Resistance is about to premiere back into the era of the Resistance. Love it. The Resistance era. Are you ready for our first combatant? Absolutely. Our first combatant is Kaluin Imat. Like many Resistance officers, Kaluin Imat is a veteran of the Rebel Alliance. During the Galactic Civil War, he was a member of the Shrike's Recon Unit and the sole survivor after an ambush on Tanab. Promoted from Major to General after the Battle of Starkiller Base, Emot fled Dakar with Leia Organa ahead of the First Order's hunters. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. Mm-hmm. This guy uh, from the StarWars.com databank, that's what they have to say about uh, not Major, Emot General. You might. Mm. Uh, so do you have uh, more on this guy for Wikipedia? Uh, yeah, a lot of things. Uh, love this character, but let's get into the bare bone, f- uh, bare bone facts. Uh, do have uh, the, ooh, the full complement of uh, figures. We've been out l- lately. We've had some problems with that. Uh, 1.8 meters tall. Ooh. Um, we know him as an older uh, male with the, the brown, later white and gray hair. Eye color brown, skin color fair. Long shoulder, almost, yeah, I'll say shoulder length hair. It can, yeah. it's, it's shorter on the shoulder length side. Uh, white flowing locks and a Santa beard almost. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he could have been to Wood, uh, Woodstock. Absolutely. He looks <laughs> a little like a Cheech and Chong kind of character. <laughs> uh, now, is his Wikipedia page pretty fleshed out? They're certainly hinting at a lot of different things. The Shrike's mm-hmm. Recon Unit, uh, Ambush on Tanab. I remember he was in one of those Journey to the uh, Force Awakens book, I believe, Leia's. Yes. Uh, there's some stuff about young Emat. He is, uh, I think there's more stuff starting to pop up here because you're right, like moving target. He's yes. there before the awakening, Poe and the missing ship. There must be, is there something new? Because there is a lot more, the stuff you're saying about his being part of the uh, the Shrieks, and there's a concept art of him at 20 now on the Wiki pa- Wikipedia page. So there seems as though there's a a book that has come out here. Oh, wait, maybe I got the link there. Uh, Smuggler's Run. Oh yeah, that's the that's the solo one. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, you know what? That's that. I think they are trying to. Uh, I think he might be defecting. I think they might be trying yes. to get him. Yes. Yeah, simultaneous with the moving target Princess Leia adventure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And Smuggler's Runs, where they first identified his name, his first name. Ooh, the, the Kaluin? Kaluin, yes. Kaluin? Because there's, yeah, there's this great picture. It's this concept art, and it lo- reminds me of, like, young Indiana Jones concept art, like cro- young, young Indiana Jones <laughs> Chronicles TV show concept art. <laughs> you remember that guy in the background? Yeah. He's going to get his whole own TV series. That's great. Young Imat. Um, anything about the ambush on Tanab? 
Nothing. Do you see anything about that? Nothing specific. Uh, yeah, and it's been so long since I read Moving Target and Smuggler's Run. I don't remember all the details, unfortunately. Right. Yeah, no, no, nothing nothing specific here. Okay, interesting. So uh, you said you liked this gentleman. Uh, why? What, what do you like about him? I like him in this. He looks, I don't know, Leia's resistance, as we see it in Force Awakens, is is even more maybe haphazard than the, and ragtag than the rebellion mm-hmm. prior to, to Yavin 4 and, and, and the Battle of Yavin. So when this guy shows up and he's got no military standard haircut here, <laughs> And he's got the big beard, and he's just kind of gruff, but a little mysterious. Yeah. There's just something I was immediately drawn to him. Very happy to see him continue on in uh, into uh, The Last Jedi and yeah. promoted, promoted. In, 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 in the heat of battle. Yeah, I think... Uh I think I liked his look, too, because he really captured to me in Force Awakens that guy of, like, I don't want to have to be here. I already <laughs> saved the galaxy. I got, <laughs> all right, all right, I'll come help you save the galaxy again. But I'm not cutting my hair yeah. or my beard. This is my Dodonna cosplay. I'm not changing it up. Yeah. Um. So there's that <laughs> element to him. <laughs> I remember I once got in trouble with my old job because I had a goatee. Oh, really? And uh, my boss was like, you got to shave it. And I was like, get a suit and tie it this time. And I go, the corporate head in Chicago has a goatee. So now I'm looking at Emot, looking at Dodonna. <laughs> now I can't get that out of my head. Dodonna had a beard? Why can't <laughs> well, I? Why can't I? Why can't I? Does young uh, uh, Emot have a beard? No. Young Emot is more uh, typical uh, military, uh, uh, high and tight, little Brad Pitt in the movie Fury haircut. A little okay. More, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Clean shaven. Yeah. Uh, I think I just, you know, really attached to him because, you know, growing up of the, oh, you discover that Cliff Clavin is actually actually Major Bren Derlin. And, you know, you, you get to know all those background characters. And from Force Awakens, he was one of those cool, like, oh, that guy's got a name <laughs> just in the background. Yes. And then uh, reading about him uh, in Smuggler's Run yeah. and, and, you know, connecting all those dots. Love and, the connections. It, it, yeah, the connection, that emotional canon where for Leia, she is surrounded by people that she has had long relationships with. Yes. And people who have come out of retirement, it does give it like yeah. much more emotional resonance. You get to that scene in Last Jedi where she's like, no more losses. Mm-hmm. When you really like half these people who are dying around her, she has known forever. Forever. And personally recruited and personally said, I understand you have a nice cabin on a lake on Ryloth, but could you? Yeah. You know? It's what, yeah, I was re, uh, re-watching Last Jedi and, you know, when, when Holdo goes and sacrifices himself and there's that shot of the, the little shuttle leaving and it's on Leia's face. The crate shot with the the mask and the yeah. eyes and this is a beautiful shot. This one's less like artistic. It's just as quick shot. But the look on Carrie's face, the look she the the, the what she, the emotion she portrays of it's another friend. Yeah. Another person I, I knew and loved gone. You're right, it carries weight. Yeah. Um and come on, he he's got uh, the great scene in Last Jedi where he's the one who walks up. And disturbs uh, the salt. Yes. So that uh, Sergeant Sharp <laughs> can taste the salt and say, salt? And he is, am I seeing this right? All right, so I know, so the actor is Andrew Jack. But okay. what it, he's not so much an actor. He is the, the dialect coach in the Star Wars films. So he, in Force Awakens, what? was the dialogue and act, uh, accent coach for Daisy Ridley and John Boyega. And he's uh, had, a, so he had a brief acting role. And then he's worked with... Robert Downey Jr. and Chaplin, Pierce Brosnan and Goldeneye, and other James Bond films, and created the Middle Earth accents for the Lord of the Rings trilogy. What? And worked in Troy, speaking of Brad Pitt, as well. And then it says here, Moloch. He's credited as Moloch in Solo Star Wars Story. But oh, we'll oh did he do the voice? Yeah. Wow. Amazing to think that General Emot. <laughs> Coached Pierce Brosnan back in the nineties for yeah. Goldeneye. That's so I mean, cool. Wow. I mean, he's done a lot of crew work and, and behind the scenes stuff. So that that would make some sort of sense. All right. Yeah. A voice. He was the voice and dialect coach for Solo as well. So I guess they say, hey, do you want to just be Moloch? Oh, awesome. Cool. Okay. So All right. Well, in a way, well, he's, he's already fought. <laughs> he's fought his Moloch. <laughs> uh, but now he will fight yes. his Emot, not Moloch. Emot, and he is gonna go up against someone else from the Resistance era. Are you ready for the next combatant? I am, I am. It is Captain PV. Oh, excellent choice. We have a good yeah. battle of rank today. That, exactly. This is, uh, this is right up your alley, Ken. This is <laughs> a military dude against a military dude. Yeah. Uh, here's what StarWars.com Databank has to say. Edrison PV 
commands the Star Destroyer Finalizer, which requires him to take orders from General Hux. Peavy has little respect for Hux, whom he regards as an arrogant schemer with a poor grasp of tactics. <laughs> but as a veteran of the Empire, Peavy respects the chain of command and keeps his opinions to himself. Love it. Yeah, Captain Peavy. Captain Peavy. So, uh, what do you what do you got? I, I believe we've talked about Captain Peavy before, yeah. and I think we're all going to be fans. But uh, yeah. wh- what's Wikipedia got to say? Uh, they don't have his height. They don't have his height. hair color blonde, <laughs> but grain uh, eye color blue, skin color fair. Uh, human male, we know that. So a lot of that stuff. And the quote, you know, all right, this is what they went with. We've caught them in the middle of their evacuation, the entirety of the resistance in one fragile basket, which I believe is the novel quote. Um, <laughs> They needed to, the quote needs to be, I believe he's tooling with you, sir. Yes. That's the best quote for him. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so no, we have no height, so we just have to, we have yeah. to guess if this becomes a battle of height. We're, we're going <laughs> to have to use our imagination. 1.8 versus, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so what are your what are your reactions to this character then? Hey man, I love it. You know, for whatever reason, obsessed with Imperial officers, and that transfers over to Captain Mode and Kennedy, and then we got Captain Edrison Peavy. I did just learn the first name there. Yeah. Uh, just something about it I love. Um, Adrian Edmondson plays him. He, of course, was in the uh, the classic British series in the 80s, The Young Ones, which is, I think, why Ryan Johnson put him in this film. Yeah. So he's got some history there, so I love that kind of stuff. But then uh, I get, I just... I love, uh, I love what the Last Jedi does to Hux and the First Order. And people, I understand some of the humor. Uh, the thing I always hear, well, the humor undercuts Hux. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love. And part of that undercutting and that he's a bad leader and all this kind of stuff is PV just kind of like, oh, I believe he's tooling with you, sir. Like, it, it, and it just adds something. By the time Kennedy shows up and is like, oh, we should have launched him five minutes ago. It's building, it's building, and I just love what's at play in those yeah. scenes. Yeah, and, uh, and PV sticks around. I didn't have a chance to, to review Last Jedi and, and see like all of his scenes, but I feel like he's got a lot of great... Um, mm-hmm. This uh, databank says PV respects the chain of command and keeps his opinions to himself. Well, with his mouth, but maybe not with his eyes or mm-hmm. facial expression. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's lots of great, like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go. Or you like, I'm really worried about what's happening next. I think he's get, he's got a lot of rich facial expressions. He does. Yeah. He really does. Um, are you a Young Ones fan? I know a lot of people are so excited uh, by this because of the actor. I, I am. Uh, I, I love British stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't get into the TV shows as much. Like, I'm familiar with Spaced and... and and uh, the, the other one, I'm so familiar with it, I forget the name, the one that uh, Chris O'Dowd's in. Um, uh, the IT crowd. IT crowd, yeah. Uh, thank you. So I am familiar with this in, because I'm also a big Monty Python, so I just, in, in the history of British television, have I watched every episode? And I was like, yeah. no. But I, I uh, and I didn't immediately pick him out on screen in Last Jedi, read him about it. I was like, oh yeah, that guy. Yes, now yeah. it makes sense. So I'm not going to say I'm a fan, but just as a fan of British comedy, I understand it's a place in, in, in the pantheon of UK comedy. Yeah. So it's cool. And, that, and I love that kind of stuff where Ryan was a fan, so let's get this guy in type of situation. Yeah, and it pays off for, for those rich facial expressions that you get the right. comedian who can really play those beats without overplaying them and all that kind of thing. Right. Uh, yeah, I, d- I am aware of young ones. I've seen a couple episodes, but I don't know it uh, right. the way that some other fans uh, know it. Uh, yeah. So this data bank brawl will not be a mashup of Star Wars <laughs> and Young Ones, <laughs> as it could be, as it might be, it might in be. other people's hands. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other details. Are there? Is does he have further adventures in Wikipedia? Um, not, there's there is a lot. It's funny. There is a lot. Wow, it's still scrolling. What? Still scrolling? Is it just breaking down every? I mean, he's involved in lots of key events in yeah, Last Jedi, that's, right? That's, that's kind of what it is. I mean, it goes into detail about he was a veteran of the Galactic Empire, all that kind of stuff. Um, and he takes command of the finalizer right when Hux goes over he to does, the supremacy. And then Captain Yago is the one who's in charge, and you learn a little bit more in the novel. Yago hated Hux, too. And then yeah. PV and Yago, actually, I, even though PV kind of now took over his ship, uh, the Suprem- it just was yeah. like there's a respect there. Um, but yeah, nothing, okay, so nothing specific, but enough to where I actually kind of want to read through the perspective of PV on the first order. Yeah, you know, it doesn't, it, it, there's no confirmation that PV died. There's no confirmation at all. Nothing listed. He was involved, uh, said uh, PV and Hux oversaw the Battle of Crate from the command shuttle oh. of Kylo Ren. Well, then, then yeah, he, yeah, he lived, so right? he's good to go. I'm, does that, I don't recall that in the movie. It might be the novel. I don't know. Yeah, if he's in that command if shuttle? If he's in the command shuttle. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, weird considering how many times I've seen the movie. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. you got to watch it uh, once every time for every character. Yes. So you can have a PV watch of The Last Jedi. <laughs> Any <laughs> other thoughts? No, other than this is an interesting battle. All right, then let's fight. Now, as we always like to do, we start with the where and the when. Now, this could be before Last Jedi. This could conceivably be after I, as well. Man, I kind of want to play with after, into yeah. unknown territory. Why not? Yeah, you go into the unknown unknown regions, regions in the unknown times. We yeah. know uh, Emoth survived, right? He's there standing on the uh, on the Falcon, yeah. right? Yeah, so he's good to go. Uh, his old buddy Nine Num there. I, I I like the idea of what if they meet for some kind of not sue for peace situation, but some kind of rendezvous. I don't know where they know they both are there. Yeah, they don't run each other at a bar. They're they're both like. Like the first pilot episode of Battlestar Galactica where oh, suddenly yeah. the Cylon shows up after hundreds of years of not being there to the negotiations, you know? Yeah. I don't know. You, just, you get where I'm going. Oh, I totally do, and I like this. I don't think we've had a setup like this of people who know they are at war right. choosing to meet. So it could be that PV is breaking ranks with the First Order. Right. So, you know, we can say, you know, Hux is, is maybe still not the best leader, although I think he's heading in the right direction as my head cannon. Yeah. But... Kylo. Kylo's just yes. on a path of vengeance and destruction and fury. Mm-hmm. So maybe PB's gotten to the point where, like, oh, they're two dangerous right. leaders. And Ooh, I they like that. keep saying Ooh, Snoke's still good. somewhere. So maybe maybe he knows, he gets intel yeah. that on some planet, maybe even in space, there's going to be possibly a strike by this little band, this resistance. Right. And he actually gets a message out to his old nemesis who he clashed with during the Galactic yes. Civil War and says, I I want to I want to meet with you one on one. Yes. And what if it is in a new uh Numidia Prime? Ooh. Which is the end of Solo. Yeah. The the, the, the jungle uh, planet, so to speak, where the where the Falcon changes hands. Oh, I love this. I love this. A, a Numidian discreet Prime meeting on Numidian? Numidian Prime. Yes. Numidian I, I think Prime. I said Numidia first. Numidian Prime. <laughs> Not Chlamydia Prime. That's no, no. a different thing. Numidian Prime. I love that. All right. So uh do they meet somewhere public? Uh where they could possibly be do they want the cover of a crowd? Or is it somewhere remote, like truly in the uh, tropical jungles. I think maybe they have to hike up somewhere uh, from on the opposite sides of a mountain uh, to uh, like an old abandoned temple. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a little, there's a little uh, like uh, ancient uh, degeric table. Right. With a <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, two chairs on either side. The spiritual home of gambling in the galaxies. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Imad agrees because he thinks, what if, what if, what, what if? if I can g- get out of this and grow my beard even longer? <laughs> what if I can end this? There's been so much death. Yeah. But I think he also thinks. I might actually be murdered by yeah by PV as well. He's smart enough to know. Yeah, smart enough, smart enough to be paranoid. Yeah. So I I think that Emot tries to get there nice and early. Yeah. Now does he do any sort of Godfather business? Does he hide a blaster anywhere? Ooh, that's great. Um, yes, I I, I like that idea. A holdout blaster. In the refresher, which Ooh. is just, it's not upkept. It's not, <laughs> straight, straight up Godfather scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. I was trying to think around that and I went right to it. No, I um, love that an ancient temple has I mean, it's the not, facilities. Yeah, it's a faci- it's not a great facility. You know, yeah, it's I like mean, a it's, rest stop on the 40 freeway outside New Mexico, <laughs> but uh, uh, Gallup, New That's Mexico. That's very or something. specific. You must yeah, have had I've had some, I could write a book. Um, <laughs> the ones in Tennessee are the best. Um, yeah, so he's a little holdout bastard. Is hidden. Is hidden. Whether or not okay. he get to, gets to it, I don't know. Not right on his person, but in the refresher. I love this. Now, I think uh, PB also probably comes prepared just in case. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, I think that PB uh, realizes that just because of the way the meeting has set up, he needs to break away, mm-hmm. uh, and he's not going to be able to case the joint first, so he's got to keep some stuff on him. Ooh, yeah. 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 Yeah, so I think that it, all of these uh, Praetorian guard weapons showed up in in the armory. It doesn't I 
he's not exactly sure what happened. Yeah. Uh, but I think he gets uh, one of the that uh, electro whip thing that can be firm but yes. can break apart. Yes. Yeah. You're thinking what I'm thinking. It's put it in his pants. <laughs> no, but that sounds good. <laughs> what were you thinking? Just that he's hiking, so he's got. You would not uh, take away an old man's walking stick. Oh right? yeah, yeah, no, I like that even better. It's yeah. not in his pants. I mean, it's a walking just, stick. Just, there's two of them. I'm sure, there could be something else in his pants. We'll leave that mystery to be solved by our, our storytelling. But I like that he's yeah he's, he's whatever the Star Wars version of spray paint is. He's painted this electro whip, <laughs> and he's pretending it's a walking right. stick. Oh, big. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Big climb up this this jungle mountain, this tropical mountain to this ancient temple. Yeah, and I think PV walks in, and there is Imat. Imat, and I think uh, Imat, even though he wasn't the one who did it in Last Jedi, I think he still has picked up the habit. Mm-hmm. He runs his finger along the ancient Dejeric table right. and says, "Dust." And that's his way of greeting PV, just <laughs> casually, <laughs> dust. I could take a sip of the whiskey when you do that. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I think Peavy walks up, sits down, makes a big show of how tired his legs are. Oh, 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 oh. Hello, old friend, rival. So glad you took this meeting. I think we could change the course of history right now. Well, I'm glad you reached out. You know, we've been through a lot over the years. Mm. Do you remember when we... Started together, both training in the Empire, and we were bunkmates, and then I defected. <laughs> yes, I always felt it was a big mistake on your part, but then you were part of the winning team then. I am part of the winning team now. Indeed. And uh, I think we're both going to be part of the losing team, mm. unless we find a way to stop this right now. I can't deny that. My uh, leadership, well, it's uneasy. Uh, at best, I'm not led by the best of uh, even-keeled men. That I, that I can agree on. The great emperor, at least, we knew where he stood. Uh, now this Kylo Ren, this Armitage Hux, they're, they're live wires. I can't have that. You are being run. You are being controlled mm. by two emotionally unstable adolescents. Do you want the galaxy to fall because of two emotionally unstable adolescents? I still think they're going the right direction. I believe in the cause, but, uh, well, the late, great Moden Kennedy and I would sit around sometimes on our breaks uh, talking to each other about what could have been if the Galactic Empire, if Gallius Rex hadn't messed up our contingency plan. I don't know where Sloan is. No one's seen her for years. This, this all could have been done a lot better. Yes. And I think, I know, in fact, from being your bunkmate, I know that you started out in the Empire, mm. with aspirations, with thoughts that it was on the right path, that order was the right idea for the galaxy, that it was a stronger central government mm. would keep everyone more safe. Now there's been years to disprove that. There's nothing but chaos, just fights across the galaxy, people's homes being destroyed. My question to you is, what are you going to do to stop it? What are you going to do to stop? You were led by the daughter of Vader, uh, the offspring of evil. I, what are you going to do about it? You're mocking me about following the daughter of the person that you actually followed, the one who I bet has choked you at least once. It was like a half one. Uh, it was an accidental. I was standing next to Ger Gerard, and it was... Uh, never mind he, he that. He missed with the Force. That's, I, what you, that's what you expect me to believe. My, I, I was... Uh, the, the Force has a radius. This the Force has a radius. just like the time that our refresher got clogged, and you told the guard on duty mm. that it was me. Um, well, I, who is more believable? Uh, you know, uh, you are, you're taller than me, allegedly. Uh, you cause more damage. And the, the point is, I trust Vader. Um, I trust his direction. Who do you think you're following? You're, you're, you're fighting for the light side? You think there's no sides? That's, that's hubris, a word I heard a lot now in, uh, in my life. Um, I, I think uh, you are foolish and you need to turn the, and, and, c- and come to us. Why don't you come to us? You could lead the First Order with me. And uh, PV uh, slams his fist on the <laughs> table. Dust flies in the air. He says, dust! Damn it! So much dust. You are a dusty old man. I hope to find the young, hopeful man that I bumped right. with. But instead, you call this meeting. You have no answers. You have nothing but insults. And so 
I have no choice but to do what I have to, which is go to the refresher, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> so, so PV goes to the refresher? PV heads off to the refresher. And I, I think the truth of what's going on in his mind is he truly, he meant what he just said. He, he meant hoped it. that PV would have a plan. And, yeah. And PV just seems to have come here out of being generally yeah. conflicted and hoping for something, but he doesn't know what. Doesn't know what, yeah. So PV walks into the refresher. Oh, yeah. And he takes a breath. Um, and then he notices, he looks down the little hole in the brick there that's a, 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 a space toilet, and he notices one of the bricks seems to seems to be out of place. He's very intuitive, very very observant, and so he, PV starts to move, and then he pulls out a holdout blaster, a resistance issued holdout blaster. Oh, this no. is not right. Yeah, this is not right. And he comes right back in and points it at Emot. <gasps> and now Emot had still had some hope that this might go his way. Right. Uh, but now he has absolutely ruined everything mm. for himself. Right. Uh, so I think he he launches into what he thinks is going to be the best uh, nonviolent defense. Okay. Because he's still hoping that he can get through to PV. Right. And I think what he does is he slams his hands on the table <laughs> and tries to throw as much of the, this, this incredibly dusty table. Dust. They've both commented on it at yes. this point, where and just tries to throw it up in PB's face. Yeah, yeah, a um, little bit. There's a little bit of coughing. Uh, PB says enough and starts blasting. Oh, he just starts blasting. Yes. Okay. But there's enough dust to uh, bl- block his shot, bl- cover his eyes a little bit, so he misses by uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, a foot. Yeah. yeah. Emot does uh, what a lot of us have been doing mm-hmm. in Battlefront 2, which is uh, roll. Oh, Emot rolls indeed. <laughs> the evasion rolls. Yep. Evasion yep. rolls. Yep. He's, just, he's rolling back and forth. His back is cracking and oh, creaking. Not good for these two old he guys. He is trying to get out of the way. And I think uh, as he rolls, he's shouting, like, look, I can explain. I can explain why the blaster was in the refresher. Yeah. I can explain. Uh, and he, he tries to explain as he rolls. He's surprisingly mm. good at rolling, or <laughs> PV is a really bad shot. Because this goes on for a little while. Yeah. And as uh, Emat is rolling, mm. he is just... Uh, yelling out like, look, I have to protect myself. This is the entire dynamic of our, of our war. You get aggressive, we're defensive. We're just trying to defend. Look at me. I'm rolling. I'm getting sick to my stomach. I have no idea what is up. I just wanted to defend myself in case you attacked. Yeah, he's saying a lot while rolling. That's yeah. a good skill. That's a good skill to have. And he rolls all the way around, unintentionally coming back into PV's line side, almost stopping at PV's feet. Um, so close that PV can't shoot. Uh, it's like, you know, it's like the Greedo thing. It's point blank range. You're going to miss. You're so close. <laughs> so um, PV starts, lifts up his, his right boot and he starts to, uh, he's going to kick Emot right in the gut. Ooh. But Emot, boom, blocks him. But catches his foot? Catches his foot. Yeah. Catches his foot and pulls PV over him and down to the ground. The blaster goes skittling and flying up. Yeah. And that walking stick falls over. Yes. Cracks open, <laughs> energizes. Oh no! And then Emad is like, "Look, look! You brought a weapon. You're blaming me. Your walking <laughs> stick was a, a force whip or a light whip. This is just like you. Just when we were kids, you wouldn't take responsibility for it. And, uh, yeah. I think Emad goes wrestling for right. the whip. Right? Does he get there first, or does PV? They both roll <laughs> over and each grab with one hand. <laughs> The opposite end. <laughs> Gunk. Yeah. <laughs> Things electrified now. Yeah. And now it is a tug of war between these two old guys on the floor of this faraway temple. Yeah. If you were to see it from the outside, it would look like some strange music video mm-hmm. where two old dudes are trying to <laughs> do like jump rope with an electric whip. Because they're, they're, they're tugging it back and forth, but they're looping it around, it, and they're not really hitting anything. It has the awkwardness of the Dancing in the Streets video of Mick Jagger and David <laughs> Bowie. It's just really weird. It's whipping in the temple. Whipping in the temple. Not dancing in the streets. Yeah. Whipping in the temple. Yeah. Now, I think, I mm-hmm. think that Emat realizes, I never even thought about this. I should be better at strategy. 
I have to admit that imperial training, it's stricter. Yeah. Sometimes in dungeon. Yeah, you don't, they don't count for improv. Yep. I need to use my height as an advantage. Yes. So he rises up to his full height. Yes. And uh, pulls down. Yes. On the whip and jerks PV forward. PV's, or, yeah. yeah. PV's hat goes flying off. Oh, yeah. And PV, but, but Emot doesn't quite think this through. So PV tumbles and knocks into Emot. And now they're <laughs> both on the ground. But then because he didn't let go of the whip, they're now both wrapped in the whip staff. Oh, they're tied up in the whip staff they're now. They're just tied up. Like L- a, electricity is zapping them a little bit? Like an earbud in your pocket. <laughs> they're just, they're around your car key. You just, you can't, they can't figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, this is terrible for them. Uh, now, where do you think PB is at emotionally? Um, there's a little bit of frustration, a little bit of confusion with himself. He's like, why did I come here? It, was I ever at any point going to, you know, think I was going to uh, change sides? And did I ever think crusty old Kaluan Emot would change sides? He did once before and broke my heart. He's not going to do it now. I, what, I was stupid. I was stupid. So now PV's mad. And now this, he's like, and then I'm fall. Why am I not saying? I should be saying more to Armitage Hux. Yeah. We, we could get more done if I spoke up. Yeah. I would have told him to watch for Kylo a long time ago. <laughs> so in there. A lot there, of internal struggles going on. Okay. And he's, he's not shouting any of this? Mm, he's shouting some of it. Okay. Emot's really good at shouting while rolling. Uh, it is really his number one skill. It is. Uh, so Emot is, uh, he is shouting about the, uh, just the virtue that he knows PV to have in his soul. Like, mm-hmm. you're intelligent. Intelligence has to lead towards emotional truth. If you think things through, you will realize there's nothing here but darkness and yeah. violence. And all we want is peace. We just want peace. I just want peace. peace. Hits him in the kidneys as best as he can. Yeah. He's talking about peace. And I think he might trying to distract him as he rolls ever closer to the blaster in yes. the other corner. Yes. Um, and I think he might rolls there and is able to grab the blaster. Uh, he, you know, he, you want, you want new Han Solo and they had conversations long into the night, men of action and lies do not become them. And uh, also Han Solo said, trust me, shoot first. Yeah. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. Um, and Emot without hesitation shoots. And I think it buries right into, uh, uh, PV's left shoulder. Oh, he, <laughs> he gets the blaster. They're still kind of tangled up. He yep. blows I think does it does the whip uh, separate? Uh, yeah, a little bit? yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So now uh, he rolls free and PV's on the ground in pain. Yeah, a blaster bolt through his shoulder. That's a little holdout blaster, so it's not as powerful. Yeah. per se. But yeah, that's what's happening. Boom! Blaster, go, blaster goes off the top of the temple. Yeah, rocks, and dust crumble. Yeah. So I think Emat struggles out. Now suddenly he's the one who has both the, the whip and the blaster. Oh yeah, and he's got a choice about whether to end mm-hmm. PV. Right. But it, so he's frozen. He's got a moment to wrestle. Does yeah. that give PV an opportunity to strike back? I think, yeah, yes, but it's pathetic. <laughs> PV, PV uh, uh, whips off one of his gloves because he has gloves on, like uh, officer gloves, with his mouth, and he bites onto it, and then like flings it, and the glove like barely it flops, it flutters like a fallen piece of paper or a dying bird, and just lands on Emot's feet. So it's trying to slap him in the face. Yeah, he's trying to. Yeah, yeah, and but it, it doesn't work. It's pathetic. And I think Emot says as much. Like, yeah, this is so you. I know we stayed up night after night in our bunks, and I would hear the real you, so passionate, so thoughtful. But you get in front of an officer. Do you say what you really mean? No, no. It's all just. Little passive aggressive facial expressions. I was, I didn't want to talk to passive aggressive facial expression PV. <laughs> I wanted a man who believed in what he said, who right. stood for something. I don't want to do this, but I have to. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think maybe this is a good time to pause in our comments yeah. and decide. Uh, a natural spot of pause here. Yeah. Who, who we think should uh, win? Who deserves to win? Who do we want to win? I I have an affinity for PV. Yeah. But I think he's done a lot of wrong and he's chosen the wrong things and there's consequences consequences for those actions and I think Emot wins. Oh, you think e- Emot I wins, think right? Wins for the name of the resistance, for the name of Leia, for the name of of the Porgs. I I think he wins. Okay. 
Do you think he kills BB? I don't know why today of all days would be the day I'd want an actual death in Data Bank Brawl, because I like PV a lot. Yeah. But I don't see him surviving this. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. I, I could be wrong. Okay. Okay. I, I like to I'm do not, I'm not dead set on it. I like to do the murder every once in a while <laughs> on Data Bank <laughs> so Brawl. Well. Uh I I, I I agree with you with the uh, Emot wedding. Okay. Uh because I, I don't think P V has seen right. action like this. He might be a great strategist, mm-hmm. but he's mostly been in that role of complainer who's <laughs> yeah. been saying, oh, they don't do it right. Yeah. And I mean, the finalizer, he's just been flying around in an amazing ship, uh, you know, uh, oh, yeah. take, taking commands from other people. Yeah. Um, so I think it's 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 natural that uh, Emot got the physical upper hand. Yeah. But I think maybe there's a part where Emot wants to teach PV a lesson okay. in... That uh, seems yeah. more in line with Emot's thinking. Yeah. So I think Emot takes the blaster. I think he puts it right between uh, uh, PV's eyes. Oh, okay. And, and he's like, ah, I should. I can't. It's really stereotypical action movie here. Like, I should. I can't. I can't. Uh, uh, uh. And then he gets frustrated. Yeah. And he falls to the ground and rolls over on his back. And he blasts into the sky. <laughs> like, brick and dust fall yeah. everywhere. I know. I know the leadership of the First Order needs to die. That's the only way this is going to end. And I can go home and grow my beard longer. I know. I know it's the only way. But I just can't kill my old bunkmate. That's the whole point of this. We don't yeah. want this. We don't yeah. want the death. We don't want the violence. We just want this to end. I like that. I like it. I'm on board for that. How does PV respond to this reprieve of death? He looks, he's breathing heavily. Uh, uh, and he looks directly up at Emot's face into his withered old white beard. and He sees the face of his old bunkmate. He sees the young him. He doesn't see age here. And he thinks about what's happening. He thinks about who he's always aligned himself with. And now look where it's, it's ended up after. Brendel Hux died. You got this kid. And then even Brendel wasn't that good. He wasn't the best of the Empire. We know that. I've made mistakes. I should, I should die. I deserve to die. But it looks as though I won't. And PV is overwhelmed with emotions. And he starts to cry <gasps> for the first time in a long time. Just cry. Just weep. Weep openly. And... It- Emat puts the blaster down. Slowly lowers it. Lowers it. He puts the uh, electro whip down. He sighs. And he makes a rolling hands <laughs> bring it in gesture. Yeah, bring it in. <laughs> and I think bring uh, it in. Th- does PB bring it in? <laughs> he nods. Says, Oh, <laughs> you're right, old friend. And he stands up in an embrace. They bring it in. And during this embrace, mm-hmm. PV has very, very uh, subtly pulled from his beard a tracking listening device, mm. which he tucks deep into the belt mm-hmm. of PV as he pats his back, <laughs> rubs his shoulders. He gets that tracker, that listening device in there. Yeah. And yeah. thinks, ah, ha. This is this is the best possible outcome. Yeah, no murder and more intelligence. More intelligence. More intelligence. He feels slightly guilty, but he knows. He knows for the greater good. Yeah. And after a while, they they break apart, right? Right. Right. Emat is at a loss for words himself. Right. I, I think he just looks to Peavy and is like, "What now? <laughs> what now, Peavy? What now? What now, old friend? What now?" And PV doesn't have that answer right away. But they go find a little uh, ancient stone temple wet bar <laughs> where there's still some old, like some old glasses, uh, bottles there, like with wax melted over them. Like yeah. you know, the, 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 the cover of the bottles, this little wax thing. And he, they open it up and they sniff whatever's there. And like, I think this will do. And they, they uh, each pour a glass. Yeah. Some glasses there. It's little rock cu- cups. And they share a drink. Maybe one last time. Yeah. For old time's sake. I like that. And I think they talk through the Battle of Crate. And they're like, Yeah. Did you know what's going on with uh, with Jedi Master Luke Skywalker? What 
What was the deal with that? Yeah, Elon's like, I don't know. I thought, I, was, I, don't, I, don't, I thought he was there. I knew Luke like, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah, I knew I knew Luke, yeah. good kid. Yeah, yeah good kid. I didn't, <laughs> surprised. He was like, so we, everybody's always been so afraid of him. Yeah, the Everybody. droid, the droid song. <laughs> I, I, it wasn't just Leia. You know. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So they discuss. I think it winds down. They they clink glasses. Clink. And I think they both very cautiously. N- realizing that neither can really put the back to the other because this is a right. fragile truce, right? Ra- very fragile, very fragile. And I think they they walk in lockstep to the point where they even get to the door mm-hmm. leading out of the temple, and there's not enough room for both of them, and they kind of get <laughs> they get stuck in the doorway. A jam in there, yep. Little jam in there. <laughs> they kind of look, and PV uh, rolls his eyes in yeah. a, a subtly brilliant comic way, and PV kind of tugs on his beard, and, <laughs> 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 uh, and they push through. Yeah. And I think they both have this moment of fear. What if what if the resistance, what if, what if the First Order is, yeah. what if troops are out there? What, what if they truly can't trust each other? And I think they both just go, ah, and they uh. go running off in different directions. <laughs> and there's nothing there, just some of the locals with those big hats, kind of <laughs> some big trouble, little China, just yeah. kind of looking. Uh, you know, just they, they, Emot runs past a, like a gambling bar down yeah. there that has a placard on it that says the Millennium Falcon one here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe he just gets back to his shuttle. Yeah. And that's truly the end of our fight. But do you have any any uh, post-credit scenes yeah. in mind? Iman reports back to what is left of the Resistance, and he meets with Leia, whose health is failing, the uh, spacewalk, uh, her, her exposure to the elements. It's taking an effect. Um, and he just looks at her. She goes, did you, did you do it? Did you, did you take care of PV? And he says, I think I... I think I did more than take care of PV. I think I got to him. And also, we're going to get some more intelligence. <laughs> yeah, I think it's perfect. And I think he turns on the recorder and he hears the flush of a refresher. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And cue the Star Wars music. <laughs> oh, a sad but a heartfelt tale of two old bunkmates. Yes. Trying to sue for peace. It's a hard old galaxy out there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think uh, as with our data bank brawl, headcanon, uh, you know, uh, I'll never watch the movies the same way again without thinking of them. Absolutely. Absolutely not. To see these uh, two old combatants kind of try to fight the <laughs> temple. <try> to fight. <laughs> they only did okay, but they <laughs> tried. Uh, thank you, as always, Ken, for yes, joining me here. Uh, where can people find you? You can find me at Kednaps across all social media platforms, including YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, excellent. And as always, if there are people that you want to see fight, you can let us know. You can use the hashtag databankbrawl. As always, we want to get more ratings and reviews on iTunes. We're building to 500. When we get there, we'll do a special databank brawl featuring main characters from Star Wars. Mm, I had to swallow some extra whiskey there. I apologize. <laughs> we always want to thank Tony Thaxton for our theme music. You can check out his Patreon at patreon.com slash Cloud City Soundtrack. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Force Center. You can find me personally on Twitter and Instagram. It's at Joseph Scrimshaw. And check out my albums, podcasts, and shows on my website at josephscrimshaw.com. You can like Force Center on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. is at Force Center Pod. And until next time, as Luke Skywalker once said, well, no one was really listening to him. I care. That's it for Databank Brawl.